Hey, James, what's up? Is, yeah, All right. What's going on? Nothing much. So we got Big Game James here on the show with us. James, how are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we got you good. Uh, guys cool. in the chat, it looks like the should be working, but give us a thumbs up if you can hear James as well. <clears throat> so uh, have you been, uh, I guess, watching the show up to this point, kind of, or at least hearing a little bit of what we were talking about with the Mavericks? Uh, I didn't get to catch up on a, a lot of it, so I mean, but I'm sure y'all was talking about a lot of good stuff about this Donic thing. I know that's the the big uh, forefront of uh, what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what are your feelings? I know you you have um, some really good uh, insight, or rather, just your perspective on the dynamic between Dennis and Luka Doncic, and kind of that not so much necessarily struggle for like the alpha dog, but just kind of give us your thoughts on that, like their dynamic. Well, you know, when me and you talked, I was telling you that, you know, when uh, Dennis Smith Jr., his, his rookie year, he was kind of like the man, you know what I mean? It was like he was the forefront of everything. It was kind of like he was kind of like a building block, uh, mm -hmm. like the main building stone that the, the Mavericks were going to really uh, do the thing with, and he had a really good rookie year. Then you get a guy like Luca comes in, and I mean, this is no hate on Dennis Smith Jr. He's a monster, but Luca comes in, and I mean, he's the truth. I mean, yeah. you can tell he's going to be the real deal. I mean, he's six foot seven, two hundred twenty pounds. I mean, he can play multiple positions. He's a playmaker. You can see when he gets the ball, and he you let him create, he makes things happen. And you you can see the 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 problem is is where Dennis Smith Jr. doesn't know how to play off ball, so it's kind of like he's hesitant when to shoot, when not to shoot, when to pass. You've seen the last few games where he scored a lot of points was I haven't had a lot of assists in the games. So now it's kind of, I feel like he's kind of, what role am I? You know, I was like the man before. I, I don't know if I am the man, how do I play? Because he doesn't have the most consistent jump shot. He doesn't have a three-point range that's consistent out there. So you see if he's playing off ball, he's going to have some struggles. And I think... You know, he's kind of an emotional player, I think. And maybe he, you know, I've seen a couple games where, you know, where they said he was sulking a little bit. I told you. I wonder if, you know, he's already, Lucas had the issues with the veterans. I wonder if, you know, a guy comes in and he understands he is good that, you know, people get offended by it and then, you know, kind of messes up the flow and the, and the uh, combinations that could be good. But because people may be in their feelings, it messes up everything going forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I definitely agree that he probably needs to be the second, the second, the Robin essentially to Luca's Batman. And I think he's more raw. He'll take more time to develop. I do think Dennis has a high ceiling, but I think that's more so as an athlete rather than a refined player, potentially. Um, I mean, it's going to take time for him to get uh, all of that together. I mean, he still, still doesn't have a consistent floater no he, he's, he's been working on it but it's still yeah, yeah that's still, not there it's yet still, it's still ugly his uh, mid-range game is decent his three-point game is still not very good 33 percent, which is a little, it's it's, it's an uptick as but, of right now yeah but. it went from 31 to 33 but <laughs> yeah. um but mm -hmm. yeah the, the thing with dennis and this is what i talked about in my last article a little bit uh you know until until luca got here basically he had always been if not the best player on the team it's certainly the most explosive, most exciting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through high school, obviously at North Carolina state. Mm -hmm. uh, and then even as a rookie, you know, Harrison Barnes was the leading scorer, but Dennis was the the ticket. Yeah. He was, he was like the, the golden boy he, held up. He was the one that moved, moved the needle the most. Right. right. And then as soon as, um, Luca. as soon as Luca gets drafted, that whole dynamic changes. And now you got a large portion of the base saying trade him. He's, he's a bust. He's, you know, it's like, yeah. it, it's gotta be a trip for a player. So there's, there's a little bit of his own kind of soul searching probably he has to do and figure out his role in everything. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a challenge for sure. Uh, so let's see, you have, uh, did you get a chance to catch, uh, some of the recent games at all for them, James? I know you were talking with me a lot about like the, the game the other day. Yeah. I mean, you know, we watched a game where, I mean, Obviously, where you had uh, DeAndre Jordan get the, getting the rebound. I watched that Lakers game. Yep. Uh, it, it just, to me, when you're walk, watching the team, it just seems like it's better when Luka has the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have his struggles. I mean, you look at the games that they lost. I mean, they're on the six-game losing streak, but I think they've only lost. Uh, I mean, they're averaging a loss by six points. So they're in the games 
like all the way through. So that's the good thing because but last year they weren't any competitive. Now you have competitiveness and you gotta I think you gotta really look at Luca has changed the dynamic. Other guys I feel like really not intending to fall in line and you know, we were kinda texting back and forth where you got the DeAndre and the Wes Matthew situations. People need to understand what's really going on. Yeah. Uh DeAndre said you're probably not gonna be there next year. Wes Matthews probably not gonna be there next year. Mm-hmm. So Guys need to understand that this is the future right here. And fall in line, we're trying to win games. You feel me? That's what it's supposed to be about. It's not DeAndre Jordan. You, what do you, uh, you know, when you were talking about stat pad, you're going to get your rebounds. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, you're not an offensive player. Nobody is signing you to be an offensive player. You're right. not doing that. That's not your role. But at the same time, understand what you have in a player at this young age that can make you better. Fall in line with it. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree on that. And uh, also interesting, so do you, let me ask first, do you think that to some degree that they are freezing them out? Like, is that your opinion on it? Or, because I, I think we're, I, I'm not definitively saying that's where I think it is, but it certainly looks like there's something there. There's too much smoke to be no fire, I feel. Yeah, I mean, it's happened before in the NBA. I mean, it's not like this hasn't happened before where rookies have got froze out um, from their team because there's been some jealousy and envy. It's it's, it's happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, George went through it. I mean, rookies have come through it that they've been so good that people are just like, hey, I ain't really ready for this. And I think, you know what else it is to me? I think because he's a European player, I think those guys kind of maybe take more offense to the European guys coming in and being the man. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they're coming from overseas, they're playing over there, and I feel like the guys maybe in the NBA may feel like you need to earn your role because you are overseas. When this guy is good, and I think to me that may have a part of it. If this guy came out of just straight, uh, you know, high uh, college and played one year, uh, maybe it might be a little different. But the fact that he's coming overseas, I still think they get that rep that you still got to earn your rights, even though European ball is totally night and day from when uh, coming up from the '90s now. I just feel like they still kind of look at them like you need to earn your key because you're a European player. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Dallas has lost a ton of close games in the last year and a half. I mean, they, yeah, yeah. It, like an absurd amount, something like how many did they have last year within five points or something? It, it was, was like 20-something, 27 or something. And like then that. if you extend it, like sure counting Rangers crunch time, it goes like into like 38 or something yeah, like that. I'm sure Rangers they, King has the stats. Yeah, probably. Brain. But they, they've, they've been always on the cusp, not over the top. And the way I view the whole – accusation regarding freezing out Doncic uh what I was talking about earlier I look at the San Antonio game when Luca had four shots in the first half and then in the third quarter uh when he started to get going he hits a three and then you see and now you don't I don't think you really hear him in the clip but you can kind of read his lips, lips. Yeah. he's uh you know kind of like what's the he's basically like you know yelling essentially kind of like under his breath like give me the effing ball and I think even though he, you know, scores 31 in that game, he got going and got them to overtime. They should have probably won that game because Dennis misses free, free throw, throw yeah, at the very one, end. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. um, I, I think if you look at that from the veteran perspective, I think that might have rubbed guys like Wes and DeAndre the wrong way that you got this 19-year-old walking in at the time, eight games, seven games, seven games like into that. his NBA career. He's already your best player, which is probably a blow to their own pride. And he's telling you, Especially just give both, me the effing yeah, ball. Both of them are on their, on their, I guess, last years of the contract. So True. But here's how I view that. Like th- This is to put the quick bow on what I was trying to say with that. Uh, if that's the case, you you have to have some kind of meeting with the players or something like that to be like, okay, this has to end this squabbling or whatever. If you're, you know, prideful, whatever, trying to freeze out Luca, you got, you got to get over that because the, this is the reality. Luca is the face of the franchise moving forward. Wes Matthews, Deandre Jordan, James, like you said, they are going to be free agents this summer. And while they would like to keep Deandre, I don't think that they probably end up keeping Wes. Like if it, if you're going to make me pick between Luca and either of your bum asses, I'm going to take Luca. Like right. put it, put them together. I don't care. I'll, if if they can't bury this thing, I would get rid of them during season. I'm not even kidding. Like, if if because this season, if if they don't turn it around, this season's not going to end up in the playoffs anyway for them. Mm-hmm. And for them to get in the playoffs now after this rough start, they'd have to be on like a 56 win pace just to get to like 47, 48 wins, mm-hmm. which is probably the minimum you need to get into the playoffs this yeah. year. So yeah, I mean, 
you're going to have to make some assessment of that. And if you're going to make me pick, it's a no brainer, man. I don't care if you, I don't care what service you have done it. Even if you're West Matthews, like, see ya. That's why I was asking because West in the past, he hasn't been playing like this. You know, he's not the type of dude. He knows he's never been because he played with, he played with uh, Damian Lillard and all them. He's not the type of person to be putting up 20, 20 shots a day. Yeah. That's absurd. Like you're, you're probably the fourth uh, dude, when Wes is getting all the shots, you hear a lot of this. <laughs> lot of I don't think James was able to hear it, but I just yeah. played a boo drop, like the crowd booing. Like <laughs> <say. laughs> I'm just saying, though, you know, Wes has always been that guy that shoots a lot. I mean, he's been that guy when he was at Portland. He shot the ball a lot, too. I mean, he's yeah. kind of I mean, like... He, he, he was, it, was, it, was more, it was more catch and shoot. It wasn't yeah. creating off the dribble. I, I think, he's never been that. I think part of that dynamic is his, when he first got to Dallas... You know, after DeAndre snubbed us the first time, same mm-hmm. offseason. It was him and Harrison would be the next year. He mm-hmm. had one more season still with the Warriors before he came over. So Wes, for the first two or three years he was here, he was really asked to be like one of the best players, mm-hmm. even though it didn't fit his skill set. And we didn't have an offense that could create a whole lot. Oh, yeah. And so the it led to we had and, Harrison Barnes. Was, and again, Barnes was the, the next the year that he year. came over. So, yeah, it's I think it, for him in Dallas, for whatever reason, he got into that mode of thinking he needed to be the one initiating stuff at times. And that's why you see him going off the dribble. Now he's shooting the floater pretty well so far this season. He's doing pretty good. He, he's had stretches lately. Mm-hmm. But he's done a lot of that, and I feel like that shouldn't even be a part of your game. Like, I'm glad you're hitting it, and it's nice, but that that's not your game. I want you to be defense and spot up for three. And that's, I mean, that's just the reality of where it needs to be, and he needs to understand now that the guys are here, the talent is around that mm-hmm. you don't have to be that. You don't need to be that. He's second on the team in shot attempts this season. Yeah. And until like two games ago, he was leading the team in shot attempts. Yep. That is, I don't want that noise at all. No, 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 he no. should be like fourth, fifth, uh, fourth, probably. probably fourth on this team. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, I feel like it's starting to maybe level out, but I don't know. The, I, I suspect that I would probably level up as soon as Harrison Barnes got in. Um, back and in, Barnes but, has been back five games now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's still. I, I never. I never thought he was the type of dude to go off dribble and stuff like. Like literally every time he he does that. Like I don't mind him posting up because he's a big dude and he can overpower the smaller guards. Yeah. But uh, I mean, every time I see him trying to dribble in, I'm always just like, that's not that's not what you do, bro. It's like give the ball up, let's spot up, let's hit screens for him. Like Luca will drive in, he will find you. Like, I mean, Luca's the type of dude. Luca's not dumb. If it was, I know you, I know you like him, but if it was yeah. Russell Westbrook doing that, I'll be getting my shots too because I know probably Russell Westbrook is not going to find me because he's a, he's a score first. Mm-hmm. Luca, I know he's putting up numbers, but Luca's not necessarily a score first. Luca is, I'm gonna do the right play first. That's what Luca is. That's why I don't mind him having the ball in crunch time. He drove in. And he, he he saw Harrison Barnes wide open in the corner, and he gave him the ball. He didn't need to score. Yeah. A lot of players won't do that because a lot of players have this um, hero ball complex that I need I need to be the one to put the the you know the ball in the bucket. Yeah. But he saw Harrison Barnes wide open, and he gave him the ball. It's simple. He makes the right play. That's right. why I, I I have absolutely no problem with him having the ball. Now with Dennis, I would like the ball to be in his hands too. Just so I just want him to get reps in that situation. He's True. not as high of an IQ as Luca, but so I just want him, hey, you know, at least learn to if if it need to be, have the ball in your hands so you'll learn to make the right plays. Right. But Luca, I feel like he's already there. Like I have absolutely no problem. Okay. If if Luca if, if Luca was on a championship contending team, I would still feel like he should have the ball. Yeah, in his I, hand, I, I think in so. His hands, I mean, he's definitely right looking play. like an all star yeah. at the very least so far. So, James, what do you think uh, Dallas needs to do to kind of right the ship a little bit coming off the six-game skid? Uh, they're not off the six-game skid yet, trying to get <laughs> off the six-game skid. I mean, um, I'm just bouncing off you guys. I mean, just yeah. like uh, Luca. I mean, just like you said, Luca is just the type of guy right now that, you know, when he's – if you guys can't do it, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? I feel like he's that type of guy. Like, I'm, a, he naturally knows who to get involved, like – Certain guys that play the game, you don't have to tell them. Like, they just know how to create. They know who, when they go to the hole, they know who to get the ball to. They yeah. know if I'm taking you off the dribble, I can pull this J on you. They know if I go to the hole, this guy's going to double-team me, I can drop it off to DeAndre. 
I mean, the dude has been throwing hella alley-oops. You know what I'm saying? Getting people right there. You know what I mean? It's just like when he gets, they get the rebound, especially if he gets the rebound. I love when he gets the rebound, takes it coast to coast because you don't know what's going on. It's yeah. like something's going, something good going to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something right. good going to happen. Both Matthews, let uh, Luca get the ball and take it, and then go start out to the three-point line, man. And, and then open, when he goes to the whole Damn, three-pointer, because right now you're only shooting 41% from the field. You haven't shot 17 points. You're only shooting 34% from three-point range. That's got to be better because you're trying to do too much. Let the flow of the game come to you and let the man create, just like you were saying. So I think the issue, like with Dennis Smith Jr., is he doesn't know when to. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Because he was the guy that was ball-dominant. He was the ball-dominant guy last year. He was controlling the tempo. Now you have Luca that has it. Now he don't know what to do because he's off ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, do I do I take the three? Do I go to the hole? You know what I mean? I think that's where he's trying to figure out his role now in the the essence of the offense because now you have somebody who can control the tempo like you can. But the biggest thing that Dennis Smith has to do is he's got to get that jump shot together yep. because if he had that solid jump shot right now, Luca coming to the hole, then boom, Dennis shot, boom. Then then he can go to the hole and do everything. His game is so much better, but he's got to get a consistent J. Yep. Yeah, a- absolutely. I-, I agree. And Dallas has got to get Luca going earlier on in the game. Uh, he's not other. There's really only been like one first quarter this year where he was able to immediately make an impact. And that was Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for the most part, he doesn't get a lot of shot attempts early in games. And, you know, we've had a couple games where he didn't really start doing anything until the second half because he wasn't getting the opportunities. Yeah. And that's part of the frustration for him because Dallas has been especially the first quarter is the most inexcusable one because we have been painfully slow start yeah, offense lately terribly. and so when you're not letting your best player get shots and you're falling into a hole it's like what are we doing here <laughs> Do, are, are we trying to tank is that the mindset like what yeah, are we doing it makes, doing it kind of let us know but not, i feel like not as bad as last year but let us know because i feel like they're looking at these guys like they're looking at luca the vets are and their mindset is, you might be the best player here, but you have to earn mm-hmm. these certain things. I don't care about that, man. And if, like, he, if he has to earn it, he already has, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say so as well, he yeah. He already has. Like, if that's, if that's what we're at, fine. Yeah. Hashtag, but yeah, let's man. be real about that. Oh, got a cluster there with the graphic. I'll fix that. But you know what? You know who else? Like, you know, we've been talking about a lot of guys. And, you know, we mentioned, you know, I told you, Harrison Barnes, man. I mean, I know, like I said, he's... He left from Golden State, came over, got 19 and 18. But mm-hmm. to me, it's like it's a 19 and 18 that's quiet. You know, it's, yeah. it's not like a – to me, it's not like an impactful 19 a game. Yeah. It's not an impactful 18 a game. He's averaging 14 a game right now. Mm-hmm. He's shooting less than 35% from the field, shooting only 29% from three-point range. I mean, it's like I, we need more from Harrison Barnes. I, I feel like when they brought him over, it was kind of like, man – you know, you want to get out the shadow of Golden State. Well, if you want to get out the shadow of Golden State, make plays, dog. Like, be the guy somebody can get depend on. It's just like sometimes he just feel like he just goes away and he's just like, where are you, Harrison Barnes? We need you to be one of those guys that you can consistently be. Like I said, guys can score 19, 20, 22 in a game, but is it in- impactful? Yeah. Is yeah. it impactful for the team? And that's the where I think the team, the the points a game, yeah. No, Absolutely. And, you know, that that is something they're going to have to figure out because they view they view Barnes like the Michael Finley to Luca and Dennis's Dirk and Nash. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, no damn Michael Finley. Ain't no damn Michael oh, Finley. I, 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 yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying that's how they're literally marketing him. Like I, I was saying that. His leadership role wise. He's yeah. Like, he's I, like a Michael Finley. Yeah. And I was. Talk, I was hitting that uh, funny <laughs> twist there. Uh, I was beating that drum, which now that I think about it, that's not a much better analogy. And now I'm starting to fall into a pit of despair. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got something for this. Unbelievable. There we go. <laughs> nice big fail banner on, on the screen now over my head. Um, let's get back to this. So I, that's, a, that's a point I was making all through the off season that I felt like that's how they viewed him. And then before the season even started, they literally were marketing the season with that exact comparison. Yeah. I, and I posted it to the prospect page uh, where it shows you, like, it's like history repeating itself. And it mm-hmm. shows you Nash, Dirk, and Finley. And then it's like, then now, you know, the Future Is Now campaign that I mean, they're doing. It was kind of repeating itself still because... Nash they were really bad at first, first with that. Injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta be patient with it, man. Yeah, but you do. That, yeah, that so, should be the number one thing we all need to take away as MFFLs. Is we need to be patient. I really just said I, mean, I was hitting that 
in the middle of a stream. <laughs> that, that happened. Okay. I've been doing this for a year, and somehow that's the worst one I've done. <laughs> oh, man. See, you can't be saying this funny stuff, man. Oh, I should have I should have used this. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean look like you guys say, I mean, we can't expect these guys. To, you know, you got Luca, you got DeAndre. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like every, we expect you to get to the playoffs instantly. You know what I mean? But we need to understand the West. West, the West yeah. is oh, yeah. The West is dynamic. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Every every game in the West is practice. Yeah, yeah. We even thought the Blazers won't be one of the teams to not make it, but they're one of the best teams now. So that's another spot. Because I think in our in our predictions we had the Blazers out. Mm, did, not, did we have them dropping from three to out? Something like that. I mean, but if you look at the Blazers, when you ball against them, you got that backcourt to deal with. Yeah. That backcourt can keep them in the game all game long because those guys are freaking monsters. And just like I said, you got we got young guys. It's not like we got veteran guys in our backcourt. You know, it, it's. I mean, you, uh, of course, they've been putting West Matthews. You know, he's got Luca at the small. But let's say if you had him were rotating at the guard position, mm-hmm. still first players, second year players, still young guys that we're depending on, and you're going against brutal guys in the West every 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 game. Houston, Golden State. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, well, San Antonio. You still got to deal with these guys. They got Demar Derozan, so it's a fight every game. So we got, like you said. We gotta be patient. This is gonna be a long haul. This ain't gonna be championship next year. It's gonna be a few years before they get this right. But yep. at the end of the day, uh, let's can be competitive. Yeah, exactly. Can catch or William Phillips is right. Even Sacramento is playing good this year as well too. Dallas is 14th in the Western Conference out of 15 teams. Only Phoenix is worse, which down makes that loss look even worse. And uh, yeah, I was wrong on Phoenix. They were. They were. They were just. They were just on that game. That yeah. was it. What James? Yeah. I just said they beat the hell out of us. Oh, yeah. Just well, that on. was a Nothing close was... game until five minutes left, and then Booker just went completely unconscious in, like, five straight threes. <laughs> and it went from, like, literally – I mean, if you look at what crunch time is considered, you know, what's game within five points with five minutes to play, that was a crunch time game. Mm-hmm. It's just that it, as soon as it hit crunch time and it became official, he was like, yeah. I'm pushing yeah. into this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was let me, let me ridiculous. Let me ask y'all this. So if we're coming down at the end of the game, and who, who's the who's the guy? Who's the go-to guy? Who's the guy that gets our last shot? Yeah, with with the Minnesota game, that was Dennis, but Luca played a big part in that too. I feel like it's already I mean, supplanted it's basic, to be Luca. Is it's? I feel like that's what it should be, but we haven't gotten. I mean, it depends. Look, look it at the Laker game. It depends. It depends on who who. Ha- out of them to out of Luka and Dennis is who's the hotter the, person right now. The Laker game. Who has a better matchup, which most of the time it will probably be Luka just because of his size and his IQ and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with having the ball in either one of those hands, but it's definitely not Wes. I mean, it could be Harrison Barnes too, I mean, I guess, but right. I really don't. He doesn't, like I said, he doesn't move the needle for me at all. Um, I'm trying to be positive, but if it's <laughs> at, <laughs> but if it's at the end of the game, dude, I, I know I know Dennis has the is capable. He's got of, that instinct. He's got the him. instinct. That, that shot against Minnesota was yeah, beautiful, was even good. though it was kind of an offensive. Thing. Uh, last, well, <laughs> let him know. Let him know. Rangers King, two minute, two. What was it? The two minute report or whatever. The the ref saw it. They said they didn't see a lot of contact. Okay, there you go. You know, boom. Um, yeah, so I mean, I mean, if it's in one of those guys' hands, Offensive I have foul? no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, if it was in one of those guys' hands, uh, I I don't have a problem with it at all. If I see, hey, we got trying to do some crazy nonsense. So okay, so as we move to kind of wrap this show up, we've been going like an hour and ten minutes. Um, so with the next game coming up for the Mavericks, Tuesday. I believe is the Wizards on Tuesday. On Tuesday. So the Wizards have one win as well. Or sorry, we have two. They have one win. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are a dumpster fire of their own sort. I think, Dude, Dwight, I think Dwight just made his... Dwight just move. finally debuted for them yeah. like a couple nights ago. I think it was against OKC, in fact. I think that's why I saw the headline at the time. Mm-hmm. But do you think, I'll ask James, I'll ask you first, do you think Dallas can get back on the winning track and subsequently this would be their first road win, right? No, it's a home game. Correction, home game. Do you think they can get back on track against Washington? I mean, definitely can, but this is also a game where you got to watch out for Washington because you see their record, but don't get fooled by it. You know what I mean? They still got that great backcourt. I mean, Dwight Howard, he's not what he was, was, sure. uh, but you still have something to deal with. I think the main thing with uh, Dallas, they got to play good defense, good, continue to play good team defense and, and rotate the ball. Play, 
I mean, because at the end of the day, they're scoring offensively, but they're also giving up like 113 points a game. So it's just like, you know, yeah. you defense has been that terrible. Down. Defense has been terrible, and you're going against John Wall. He, he's that type of guy, and they already have a uh, losing streak, and they're not winning. He's the type of guy who can come in and drop 50 on you. So this is mm-hmm. a game where they just have to play good team defense because Washington tends to crumble. They get they tend to get one on one a lot. Mm-hmm. So play good team defense, play within yourself, share the ball, and, and make shots. Uh, uh, like I said, West Matthews, be calm. Uh, go to the hole, shoot the jump shots, man. Just like you said, stop trying to go to the hole and do all this crazy stuff that we don't understand what you're doing. Go out there and float to that three-point line. Hit that J. That's what you're good for. You hit it in uh, Portland. Come over here. You hit it. Now let's keep on hitting it, staying on the outside, man. At least he almost did what I did. The crazy thing is <laughs> Wes isn't necessarily numbers-wise. He's not playing bad, too. It's just right. he's good. Well, keep his trade value up. Yeah. I mean, he's just making these dumb decisions that you it, don't expect it, to do nine years in the league to make, like fouling LeBron James with two seconds left right. to go in the game so I don't, when I don't, you're tied. Right. I don't, no I don't sense. try to plug a bunch of these other podcasts and stuff like that because obviously we're trying to bring people to us. Yeah. But I did hear a good point, I thought, from Locked on Mavs, that podcast, talking about Wes in particular. I know that there are, there are issues we have with some of their stuff. Mm-hmm. I know. But one good point I thought they had regarding Wes is, for the most part, he is still doing pretty well, as you said. Mm -hmm. His numbers are looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. And although I think his defense has lost a little bit of a step, he's still certainly one of the best defenders they have. Mm -hmm. With him, the problem is you get about 10 to 15% of plays where it's just, like, glaringly bad, like the LeBron thing. And you're like, what are you doing? (laughs) Like, you're a nine-year vet. How yeah. do you make that mistake to the point where the 19-year-old rookie is bouncing yeah, up and down like, like no bro, way you just did that? Yeah. Right. Hey, what's your what's your thoughts on that last play against the Lakers, dude? Because um, <laughs> there's no like to me, there's no excuse. Like people are trying to justify. There's no justification. Why are you guarding him full court? He can blast by. It's LeBron freaking James. It's, it's not. And, and, you're guarding him full court and. I mean, LeBron James, that's what he does. He goes to the hole, and he's big and strong, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. You don't think he's getting body fouls, and they're in L.A. You don't think they're going to call that for him. Like, you got to use your brain. You got to be smart, man. I don't know, dog. It's just like well, that was our game. I, it yeah. felt really close to when you had Luka coming there, bam, filling yeah. up. And it's like you have a great game, and then it goes away for that. I, I heard – I looked on the page, and I heard somebody say, uh, DDP, they're like, man, y'all killing West. Y'all must not like him. No, it ain't about nobody liking him. Uh, everybody wants to like him, but it's like be smart within the offense. Yeah. Yeah. Stop trying to do too much. You're doing trying to do too much. We understand that you're trying to get another contract, but I mean, you're probably going to get that contract because they still need players like you in the NBA. So just play within the offense, dude, and mm-hmm. get the. I, I, we just need to win games. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of us being so close. Like every game, it seems like they're right there in it, and then they fall apart. We yeah. got to stay true all the way from the first, all the way to the fourth, full games. Yeah, win- winning fixes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Winning fixes everything, man. That's the thing. Yeah. You're in a six game skid. That's why tensions are running high. And that's why you have incidents where you have Wesley Matthews getting in a heated exchange with Donnie Nelson uh, after the game. Sa- or I keep almost saying Saturday, Friday night mm-hmm. um, outside the locker room. That's why you have, I'm not going to say that's why you have like DeAndre stealing rebounds and whatever from teammates, but you have just higher tension because guys are frustrated. Luca's looking at that and he's like, Okay, here's an easy board. Okay, that's annoying. My teammate stole it. And not only that, I'm one of my specialties is getting out in space and creating, mm-hmm. getting the ball. That's he's a point forward. That's what he does. He grabs the board, he leads the break, good things happen. Yep. So of all people to steal a rebound from, that's the most perplexing one. Yep. And you know, it as quick as it happens, I'm not saying DeAndre mapped out a full list of like ten, the next ten things that are gonna happen as a result of him stealing the board, you mm-hmm. know. But it's still it's still a bad look, and I think that it's just if they can get back into the win column and do it a couple times here in the next few games at least, things will level we'll, out. Yeah, I think. We're going to be talking about. Yes, it. exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, James, tell them uh, tell them where they can find you, and if you if you want to, absolutely, we'll we'll have you on more frequently for these segments and everything. Well, hey, first of all, I appreciate y'all letting me have on. I mean, well, let me on. I've uh, been watching, you know, these Mavs been interested. 
uh, you know, last year was kind of a bad thing. So, you know, you get a little bit of excitement. So uh, definitely, if, you, if you're willing to throw me on, I'm definitely willing uh, to do that. Uh, but you can check us out, uh, Silver and Blue Nation, Big Game James, Dallas Cowboys all day, all night. We're going to be on live tomorrow for the uh, Titans game. Uh, but like I said, you can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter. But we're really big on YouTube and Facebook. Just type in Silver and Blue, not Ann, but the little Ann uh, Mark. Uh, we'll come right up. Yeah, and uh, check out, like I said, Big Game James. You know, we do it all day, all night. We have a good time, have fun with it, Cowboys all day. We're here for the fans. Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming on, James. Uh, I will be in touch with you, buddy. Appreciate you, dog. Y'all have a good night. Thanks. Sure. You too. All right.